And welcome everybody to our Daily Gun Show. We come to you live every day normally at midnight Eastern. That's 9 Pacific uh, for about an hour each night. Uh, we do three gun-related topics uh, each night, different topics throughout the week. We pick those on Monday, so if you'd like to be part of uh, creating the show, join us on Mondays for that. Uh, we, uh, some, we run it live on uh, YouTube and simulcast it over at gunchannels.com where we're watching the comments from everybody that watches the show live. Uh, we take the best ups, post them on iTunes as a podcast. So we're interested in uh, hearing from people who listen to the show now or in the future, leaving us comments and uh, suggestions out in the uh, various platforms that you might listen to the show. do appreciate the people that do that. It should help us get more listeners, and that is one of our goals. Uh, we got rid of Bob, and we got rid of Jimmy. So we got new hosts. We got Hosh jumping in from California. Thanks for joining. Howdy from California. And we got uh, Angelina, Alan Anchor. From California as well. Hello. California in the house. California, California love. Oh, California. California. Oh, California, Arizona from now on. No more Jimmy. So just Tucson and, and California. Southwest all the time, baby. Southwest represent. So I guess we'll let people watch from other states, but it'll all be very California centric. Good. Weeks from now on. So I don't know what happened to them, other ones, but, uh, We'll see what happens. So this is episode 489. It's a Thursday, so we talk about CCW and training, that kind of thing. So we'll have a couple of topics. Oh, my God. He made it. He woke up. So uh, we ran, what, we're an hour and 46 minutes late, so we're usually well done with the show by now. Um, we'll be talking about how often to carry. Wait, how often do you practice with your carry ammo? Then we'll be talking about building a gun library, what books to have on the shelf. Then we'll be talking about uh, DVDs, training with DVDs. Before we dig into that, we usually take a break uh, at the beginning of the show to talk about anything that might have happened since the last show. And since we have all those warm-up shows that open for us, we sometimes critique them, let them know what they could have done better, make their shows a little bit better like ours. Good. I'm down. Let's do this. So, anything? We we were just in Clover's chat. It was pretty good. It was a good attempt. Good attempt. Uh, no, I... I always like Clover. Clover puts out a really good effort, and I think he's trying to help a lot of people. But I think that some people need to like lift up their uh, their content to meet Clover. Honestly, like he's he's lowering himself to bring people up at his level. Clover. People need to bring their A game. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah totally. Um, let's see. Also, Yankee was on earlier, and we talked about Shot Show. Some of the Who's different. Who's that guy? Who's that guy? So he did bring up a gun made by Heiser. So remember the double shot? The Heiser double shot opened up like a weird revolver and it had two shots and then it had the thing in the hand in the handle, in the grip that you could that hold. That exploded? Like, you no, know, a couple more rounds. Anyway, they make a little mm. almost bullpup look. And, oh, the Heiser. It was all the, the metal CNC'd out like a Derringer, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, very flat, real difficult to shoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they had like a nine. They had a nine millimeter of forty five, and then didn't they make like something crazy, like a, a two two seven yep. or something like that? Two two three seven six two, two, three, two by that was it. nine seven six two by fifty one. So now they made a semi auto blowback looking thing with a fixed barrel. I think it's in stupid nine millimeter. Anyway, it looks really interesting. So uh, that'll that's something I didn't know about till Yankee show earlier. Also today, yeah, actually, yeah. that did look interesting. You saw that. Yeah, very much. It looked. I watched most of the shows tonight, off and on between nap. So I wasn't a buyer at forty-five or, or nine millimeter, but uh, forty-five seventy. Forty-five seventy, I'll be a buyer. So um, also, today, also earlier today, Military Arms Channel had a show on with one of the guys from the ATF who had been a Marine, had been a cop, I think a federal level cop or something, and then worked for the ATF. He now does private 
consulting, I guess, to help people deal with all the regulatory burden of the uh, working with the ATF and getting things processed and whatnot. So he's sort of like a, a knowledgeable consultant or, you know, whatever. But anyway, he was an interesting person to have on. They talked for about an hour and 20 minutes specifically about uh, the bump fire um, survey, which ends on the 25th. So next Thursday is the last day to return a survey. They talked about how it's appropriate to send in more than one survey if you have something to add to your previous thoughts or if you have more than what would fit in one survey uh, and the reasons uh, to do uh, to pay attention to this survey and why, how the ATF interprets the survey. Very, very good insight. I encourage anybody to watch that. In fact, we'll put a link to that video on the Military Arms Channel YouTube channel uh, here on the description of this one. And we'll also have a link to the Federal Register, the place where you can go to leave your comments, your opinion on the ATF survey. It's a 30-day survey. They started a long time ago. It's going to end in the middle of the SHOT Show uh, for some reason. Some people would say intentionally they had it end in the middle of the industry's trade show when hopefully our, 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 diver our attention is diverted to what's new or who knows what. They like to drop stuff on us on Fridays before SHOT Show. Let's remember tomorrow night is notorious. SIG brace came down, uh, 545 ammo came down, lots yeah. of stuff comes down the Friday before shot, no matter who's in charge. So uh, when uh, they also talked a bit about how it, the uh, implications of having a, a regular or the uh, legislative branch of government, the, the House and the Congress is supposed to create laws uh, based on our influence, uh, the, the repercussions of having that responsibility given over to the executive branch, and not just the executive branch, but a body within the executive branch who has no no reason to create laws, and about how the precedent being set for them to be able to create interpretations that are treated as laws, and uh, the way that the uh, representatives over on the House are going and the Congress are going to be able to just shrug it off like, well, we didn't do it. Trump's, uh, Trump's executive branch did this. It's not our fault that you got new gun control. And again, the implications of regulating rate of fire, which is what they're trying to do. And, you know, all the uh, implications there. Did you have your hat, your ham chat tonight also? I did. Yeah. We, uh, seven, uh, 7 p.m. Pacific time in uh, Thursdays. We do right now we're do, we're trying to get people licensed, right? That's that's the whole game. We want people to get licensed as ham radio operators because it opens a whole world of enjoyment that not... It, it goes along with firearms, it goes along with first aid, it goes along with everything you're going to do when you're out and about. Sometimes you're in a situation where there's no cell phones. What do you do? How do you handle that? You know, what's the best way? Being a ham radio operator is the best way to handle that. Yeah, I like to have your head on a swivel, right? I like to be aware of your environment. So let's say you sell, smell smoke or let's say you hear some commotion on another ridge over this track. Right. Right, and, and not be able to turn yeah. on a little device and get insight. Yeah, it, it's not just about immediate help, like, hey, somebody got hurt, I'm calling in the cavalry. It could be about smoke over the ridge line. It could be about something you heard. Sometimes radio is going to propagate better than your cell phone, particularly when you're up in the mountains or you're away from cell phone towers. That's why we use it. That's why it's still, you know, ham radio. You can get in on this for, you know, $20.00 basically, and, and be talking to people. And there are people out there, wherever, what state that you live in or anything like that. It's it's a great hobby. It just it just goes up from there. Talking to satellites, talking across the world, all available on ham radio. I had no idea it was that small. I thought it was like a big thing. So I'm kind of interested in it now. This is, uh, I mean, I, I can talk about 50 miles away from me with this little device. Can people find you like creepers? Oh, or? yeah. I, I, find, I find some people. I find them. Him. So you you're can. the creeper? <laughs> no, I mean, but so if you're if you if you create um, interference, like if you hop onto a repeater, you tell people like f you, and you do all this stuff, you're gonna make people come find you. But generally, people don't like try and we call it dfing, direction finding. They're not gonna df you if there's not a reason for it. Usually, you gotta be an asshole for them to. DF Imagine you. like a a, si a a movie about a submarine or something. You got that radar screen, or like an air traffic controller. You got that radar screen. Technically, uh, the people that use radios could look at your turning on and off a radio the same way you see a blip on a radar screen. Like they Man. know where you are technically and they can kind of find you, but it's not something that they're going to motivate to do unless you're really being a real nuisance. Man, I fly satellites that do that thing. Or you're a chick. 
or your that's what we do we take military satellites and we find women that's what we do with them we're like no. it was the last time a woman to apply them, so it's not even the satellite at the woman get her i've what actually heard of, of british british reconnaissance jet pilots making deliberate attempts to fly over a beach that was known for topless sunbathing. Of course. Well, but that has nothing to do with radio. Well, but boobs. Nothing at all. They're, they're eye to ground they're boob. They're, they're, they're going eye to boob. Yeah. Because of her well, music. Man, like, you know, dudes will go out of their way for women. Let's move on. I mean, about military people. They're young guys that, that they got a, you know, 3,000. They're, they're on a jet. They're on a jet rocket. They're on a jet plane. They're just rolling out there looking for you know whatever they can get yeah but you know i was just speaking come on out. bob you would do that. bob right. you do bob, are you just are you just are you just talking about what you wish you had done in your younger years is that what you're saying right now moving along oh, on radio all right you get then. Stuck. we're yeah, moving on to w topic so how often do you practice with uh, carry ammo uh, i like to usually empty my mag if i'm at the range whatever carry ammo i've got i'll empty that mag Good opportunity to replace it specifically yeah. carry ammo correct oh i i don't never practice with your carry ammo you just practice I, with cheaper factory ammo so i always practice with carry ammo the first time i buy it and if i see some kind of like appreciable difference in recoil or something like that then i might do it again but every time it's been like okay that's not that big a deal so i just load my regular rounds and that's what i shoot at the range I dump a mag and then, like, load, reload it to keep it fresh. That's yeah. I'm the same. I I want to keep my carry ammo fresh, as far as you know, the amount of time I go to the range. So yeah. Yeah, but it, what you're saying, you you take a loaded gun to the range and you dump that mag and then you fill it up with target ammo, no. or what are you saying? Just, or you just have the mag like. I always shoot like maybe a mag or two of my carry ammo, whatever I've had sitting in a mag, you know, for a couple of weeks and then reload it with like new ammo. Okay. And then I've like, then I've shot off what I've had. So, you know, get a little feel for that again. And then you put new stuff into your mag. Cause the pants, the pants in the chat saying, yeah, empty the mag. Don't want the ammo to get stale. Ammo's not really getting stale. By the way, uh, ammo doesn't get stale, but it, what it, you have no concern over the idea that you're carrying it around. So you're basically, you know, it's like a you're shaking it up, potentially breaking up the powder, potentially shifting bullets in their cases, potentially well, just the seal is the concern, the, right? The, the no. shaking up of the powder is not a big deal. It's the it's the seal. It's no, the seal yeah. casing well, and, and projectile. Because there's some concern that if you were to let's say just carry and never need your gun, like 99 percent of people and never even practice with it or anything and you just carry that gun you're gonna have pulverized literally powder at the end like flower dust as opposed to rods or cones or whatever it started out as flakes of powder so by changing the physical characteristics of powder after carrying it for so long i don't know if that's real or theoretical but there's that which has nothing to do with the effect of the you know the seal and then well, uh, the idea that's that if a very you, interesting point the idea if you carry and the projectile shifts in the case and as you're mm -hmm. carrying and neglecting and carrying and neglecting if they start to compress right so they either go i guess in or out is an issue uh but if they go in i guess you'd have overpressured potential wow know. okay so um both in the chat both in the chat and what you're saying that's a really good point i appreciate that i i think i will uh, i'll take my guns to the range and blast through all my magazines and reload them that's a good so point that might just be kind of Snopes type of stuff that the ammo manufacturers put out there just to get us to shoot our ammo, or maybe it's just a sort of Well, no, I mean, but, but if you go back in time, back. right, if you go back in time when we were talking about the M16 and the Vietnam War, when they switched powder types, that's what caused them to jam up. So, okay, so what, what what's so different uh, other than they're all just like you guys said, they got oh. all shaken up and now granulated. So they, they probably, if anything, scientifically have less power behind them is basically what you're saying. Correct. Like maybe they lose some of their ability or their burn rate, right? If they're designed I almost want, I, this is this is a good scientific experiment, to be honest with you. This is something we should take outdoors. I'm surprised if someone hadn't already done it because it's not a new theory. It's been since around since the old forums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I think, I think 
I don't know. I don't know that I've seen something like this before. I think it's just one less thing to well, go wrong. Like, no, but it could be FUD. It could be FUD. Gunpowder is gunpowder. Gunpowder has the same reactive rate in a, in a no oxygen environment in which it creates thrust. Just because it's a patty or a cone or a, or a, a rod, it doesn't matter. Oh, sure. Yes, it so. does. That's why they make it in cones and rods and flakes. That's why they they make literally it. make it that way. So it's differently and it burns for different rates. Depending stuff. on the size of the barrel or the length of the barrel. That's true. That's true. And it might be if it's fine tuned, you know, short burning or fast That's burning. True. Barrel, right? That's I don't true. know. That's a good point. Um, but I also think it could just be a, a training tip so that it gets you to shoot your actual ammo. And you know, you, a lot of people will buy practice ammo, and it's nothing near weighted or sh same right. recoil or anything to their to their real ammo. I shoot Work for while seven. I don't shoot through seven through my gun every time I go to the range. Go ahead, Bob. Yep. We lost G. So I get the idea. You guys there still? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Bob. Go ahead, Bob. Well, I was just saying it worked for Wild Bill Hickok, and yeah, worked for him. Yeah, I'll but those those it. are those are a little bit different tolerances too, right? Forty five long colt, you got a big expansion chamber, well, got a lot had, of powder in there. About Thirty two colt, Navy. Black Wild Bill? Wild Bill? Yeah, Wild Bill Hickok. That was guns he was famous for. Okay. All right, well, so nobody goes out, though. None of us go out and buy special boxes of our carry ammo to shoot down range. Well, I, I will say that the uh, ammun ammunition manufacturers went through a whole thing where you buy uh, a pack of the carry ammo and your target ammo is supposed to be very similar. You remember those? Where you could go buy like, oh, I get a pack of nine and uh, 50 rounds of nine, 50 rounds of carry nine. They're supposed to shoot the same. You could take some, shoot at the range, and you could take some and, and, and plank or whatever. I never really I never really believed that, to be honest with you. I, ne I never really thought that that was the way to do it because that's kind of like some kind of compromise between the two right you're carrying you're carrying a self-defense round for it to dissipate its energy into the target um, versus like a target round you don't really care you just want it to cleanly go through the hole that could even be a wad cutter as a revolver or whatever right so i don't know i i, I never knew how to feel about that what do you guys think have you experienced that um, I think that a lot of times when you're, if it's the same price, I could see, you know, oh, there's a no-brainer. But then it's usually more abusive to shoot high-pressure stuff. So if you're just shooting for practice or for manipulation drills and stuff, what's the point of abusing yourself? So I can understand why you'd shoot a reduced uh, target round just because you're not always practicing recoil absorption. You know, sometimes you're, you're practicing other things and having a, a round that goes off is all you need for those times. So would um, would you generally say that when you buy a self-defense round that you buy an extra box to shoot it down range to experience what it feels like? Because the pressures can be different too, right? So going back, with, going back to what I said earlier, if you have a, a hollow point or something that's supposed to dissipate all the energy into the target, sometimes they increase the powder to increase the velocity because the ball round is going to go through, right, over penetration. I like what Pants said. That's like yeah, what I, I do. I, I, yeah, Pants. All right, Pants, you got your head screwed on right today. You're all right today, Pants. So I like I the idea. I, I like the idea. Is I'm using different ammo. Just use the ammo in a different gun. I will burn a box to make sure it functions reliably in that gun. Other than that, I shoot what's in my mag at the range. Just rotate it out. Yeah. I'm going to try it. I'm going to do it. Hmm. We haven't talked about uh, theory or whatever in a while. At least I don't think I have. But theory. If you're, if you're theory. buying it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I usually sit there and listen to Matt and Yankee come up with their crazy theories. And then people in other chats come up with their ideas. I don't try to put mine out there too often. But uh, I think you should own at least a 1,000 rounds of self-defense rounds for each gun you own. So, oh, wow. Uh, okay. 
So if okay. you're buying it in that level, then buy another grand and or another thousand and uh, and shoot them because I mean you, you got to know what that recoil is like, and uh, I mean you should have a gun that can, can be capable of it too. So I'm not saying every time you go shooting, but it should be in your training regime until you're really confident with your stuff. I mean, we're talking to a big audience out there. If we're talking to somebody who's new, I guess that isn't brought up enough, at least in my mind. If you're buying something, buy something decent and account for at least a thousand rounds for just, you're a citizen of this country, you better have a thousand rounds of ammo in case shit hits, you know, Red Dawn can happen. And then another thousand rounds to make sure you're proficient with that thing. So you're going to put those thousand rounds to good use. Do you, do you make any distinction with ball rounds or cheap ammo or anything like that? or do you Buy all that you want, but I'm talking 1,000 okay. rounds of point good stuff. Hmm. So, again, if you're buying at that level when you're buying your gun, then consider buying 2,000 rounds right away and then have 1,000 to shoot 100 here and there. I mean, yeah, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're walking in that world where you have the ability to buy that level of rounds absolutely that makes sense what you're saying makes a lot of sense by the way i've got the ability to buy a bunch of stupid guns like stupid shotguns and stupid other guns that well yeah but see that's what people do is they they get caught up in the in the concept of acquiring and they're not really buying the rounds you know what i mean yep. nobody lived through y2k nobody actually had an imminent thing like uh oh we might actually have no stuff tomorrow i had so to go into work i had to go into work and i was on unix and I had to type some numbers in. I was holding my nine the whole time. And I saved that thing and nothing happened. It was all Linux though. I was all on Linux. Is that a real story? No. Why two but, but okay. It's kind of a real story. I didn't have the nine, but yeah, I was there for nine uh Y2K. It's it, it yeah, obviously it's nothing. Okay, well, so for that, we will move on, I think. That was touching on how, to, how often do you practice with your carry ammo. And you're not look, coming here for answers other than uh, more for topics to talk about in your own chats or in your own discussions at the gun shop or the gun show this weekend. So we'll move on to gun stuff and building a gun library. What kind of books you want to put on the shelf before we do? We usually feature one of the members over at Gun Channels between the first and second segment. Gun Channels is a place we built four years ago now, going on five years. And... Um, completely uh, run by its members. So uh, today we're featuring Pants, who's been out there. You all said he was legit. So uh, Pants is legit. Often runs lobbies for the uh, afternoons and uh, contributes quite a bit in the chat. So definitely the kind of person we make them channels for. Helping you watch Pants. pants. <laughs> yeah. I like Pants. Even if he does have a weird name. Take your pants off. Yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. Weird. Put them right back on because nobody wants to see it's that. It's like I remember, I remember put the the pants pants on. in the cadets, people would get pants, something that we did to embarrass the other people, you know. And then they got a mole and they were like, hey, sorry about that, bro. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry right. about that. So now it's we're going to talk about the gun library. And we have a gun channels book club someplace. One of the channels is the gun channels book club. Or back in the day, if we'd have a conversation, somebody'd throw a, a link to the book they were talking about over there. Um, but we're going to talk about what books we've got on our shelf and what you'd recommend. Hmm. Does it have to be a book? It has to be a book, right? I guess so. What are you thinking? Well, you I it? mean, you. It sucks now because in, in the gun community, particularly for like shotguns and whatnot, we live in such an internet-heavy world where forum posts cover most of everything people are looking for. Like, people are looking for loads for their for their game rounds that they're doing or for skeet if they're doing trap or whatever. That's, like, how they're building their loads, right? They're not looking at a book necessarily anymore. I don't know. It's kind of sad state of affairs, but that's kind of what people are doing. For sure. But there's definitely still books you can get. Uh -huh. I grabbed that uh, War on Guns book. I haven't read it yet, but the I think it's by John Lott. It looks kind of interesting. I mean, I don't I don't read a whole lot a whole lot of time, but oh, I got a good one. I'll be right back. Then. Let me grab it. Yeah, the War on Guns is a good one. It's uh, John Lott's a, a statistician or something, so he's he uses uh, numbers to come up with some interesting arguments, such as gun control is racist, 
and then goes through and has a lot of the numbers there. So if you're trying to have an actual uh, yeah. conversation it's or debate with somebody. What? Sorry. He mathematically shows how like the whole gun control thing is is bogus. Right. And he's got a lot of the facts and stuff. So it's not so much a book you're going to read like a story so much as a bunch of resources that you can use. Once you read through them, you know the facts and then you have a place to reference that's a, you know, you can cite an actual bound book. Okay. So I, I went and actually got a book, uh, The Law of Self-Defense by Andrew Bron Bronca. Bronca? Yeah, that's a good book. So this, this is a good book to get, particularly if we're talking about carrying guns. That was the last segment. Um, good book to read through and understand the, the realities of law. I don't think enough people really conceptualize what the legal ramifications are of carrying a firearm and using it. Carrying is one thing, but using it is completely different. Yes. Were we not talking about that kind of book? Was it like a storybook? Not then good. I recommend oh, Harry Potter. Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Yes. Wait, what are we talking about? Are we good? No, okay. no that's exactly the kind of thing we're talking about. Another one I can recommend is the uh, Gun Owner's Guides. Um, there are individual state gun owner's guides, which go into more depth. They usually have the entire current um, state law um, laws written out, and then a lot of times in plain English, so they decipher them in plain English. Uh, the Traveler's Guide to the 50 States is there's a couple of three of those that are uh, pretty decent and yep. uh, kind of each a different form factor and a different physical size. So kind of fit, find the one that fits for you. Uh, all of those are usually right under $20. And uh, those are great to have both on the shelf for just if you consider yourself an activist, somebody wants to have, you know, numbers at hand, um, then they're handy to have. But I, I also recommend having one in the vehicle if you happen to travel across any kind of state lines. Uh, that shows at least a bit of due diligence. You know, it's not the same as having an app or something or going to the state's uh, websites, but it's uh, you know something that you can pull out of your glove box and show that you're aware and that you're trying to uh, oblige by whatever laws are out there. That's a really good point. If you can show to the officers that hey, you're trying to follow the laws. This is the information you have. In in most cases, it's like being you know a couple of kilometers over the speed limit. They're just going to go, oh, okay, and you're going right through the state, and you only got another 100 miles to go. Go ahead. Like, no, we don't I, want the I don't think it works that way. I don't think it works Kilometers. Uh, so, Pants is saying some of the manuals translated to English, and again, I was saying the manuals before. There's some uh, manuals that's just handy to have in paper. Some of them are just interesting to take a look at. There's some bound uh, manuals that would be like Cowboy Guns or World War One or Two or whatever that are just interesting, like those coffee table books. Half the time you can get those things at like a flea market or swap meet or something real cheap. Well, so with that point, like conversation piece, um, if you're talking like the M1 Grand, uh, we have one of those, coffee table book, super awesome. Um, most in the gaunt, I didn't know that existed in like a fold over little coffee table book, but that would that would be great too because there's a bit of history there. And I think, I think that people don't really understand it, but the concept of like, you know, field stripping, or, you know, go no go gauges, figuring out how to like true the rifle and make sure it's good for shooting it or, or the battlefield. I don't think most people have appreciation for that. So, you know, if it's in a book, go for yeah. it. No, I, I had a, a, you know, the Guns of Smith and Weston coffee table book because that I used to get that for Christmas every year from one relative. Right. Because I knew I was into guns. So I always got this co big coffee table book about guns. And, you Always know, Smith and Weston, though? Them. Always Smith and Weston? Both all the time. Yeah. Anthem Weston revolvers, basically. And it was a huge colored, you know, picture book of Smith and Weston revolvers, you know. This is a revolver. Yeah. Uh, basically. Well, I mean, not even that. It was more like it was an art book about Smith and Weston revolvers. You know, so it was just bizarre. They're the ones you find at, like, what is it, Barn Borders or Barnes and Noble, like right near the front? You know, yeah. Borders. Orders, whichever one is still open. They're gone. They're gone. Or the no, exactly the kind that's not necessarily over. a reference piece, but more like a, like a coffee table book, something just for some. Right, time. right, right, right. And I, I think in some cases, I I would say that like if you had a, a like a gun pamphlet, not necessarily like 
all your shit is gun stuff, but if it's mixed in there a little bit, people be like, oh, that's that's pretty interesting. They pick it what up. What a look well-rounded at it. gentleman. Yes. Yeah. What a, what a dynamic individual. Underneath like a pony book. Oh yeah. So oh, pants yeah. in. Uh, or no, Scott's saying I have the U.S. Special Forces Survival Book, and there's an, the British SAS Survival Manual. I've got a little pocket one that fits like in a pocket, it's like the size of a pack of cigarettes, and then I've got the full-size one. Uh, I think there's quite a few of those that you could come up with. Uh, a lot of the stuff from uh, Delta Press back in the day. Um, uh, what's the other one? Palladian Publishing or whatever it was um, that were, did a lot of the um, gun show books, the books you see at gun shows, where... Some of those you just have, again, if you're a prepper, you consider yourself a prepper and you consider you can foresee a time when there's not computers working. Uh, that's, that's just resource material to have. Well, I mean, if you're if you're a prepper, if you're a prepper and you're, and you're listening to this, then the books, you, the author you need to look for is a American. That's 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 the prepper like standard book set. If you're going to be Dude, in that area, you read him, too. Did you? Yeah. Read all of his books? Not all of them, but I've read a lot of them. They, if they don't include ham radio, then I don't read it. No, I'm just kidding. But you're talking some kind of nonfiction books that get into the topic of prepping or something? Oh, no, they're No, fiction. they're completely fiction. And A American, I think, is a, a pseudonym. Yeah. Oh, okay. I hope it's a pseudonym. I hope it is. Come on now. No, I think I've read two of his books. and Yeah, it's they're interesting. Um, and he does. What's talk the other guy? Um, R. A. Rawls. Rawls. Um, something. R. Rawls. Um, Patriots. Patriots is a really good gun book. But again, so here's the thing. How do I how do I put this in the most succinct way possible? If it's like a gun centric book, it's going to focus on this whole prepper idea, and that's not really what we're doing here. It, it, it doesn't really have to be about like fantasizing about the gun it could just be a situation when guns are employed for some purpose yeah the problem is that like (laughs) modern day books fiction books are about like fiction they create this prepper fiction that that accentuate gun culture the the problem with the that i have with the prepper fiction is it's all about the guns and there's always this gun play I mean, there, there well, is. It's not just that. They talk about, like, you got to have a car that doesn't have a computer in it. You got to have a car that has a distributor. You got to have, you know, you got to have a carburetor. carburetor. Is all these people riding quad bikes around? Like, quad bikes weren't affected. They're all electronic ignition, dude. Yeah, but also at the same time, they suck gas and they're not efficient. Like, that's not. See, that's the thing is that, like, at a certain point, I don't want to go down this whole thing with the Daily Gun channel, but, like, when it comes to books about guns, a lot of times it's going to go into this prepper fiction, and sometimes the prepper, the prepper fiction doesn't work out in reality. They really don't um, accentuate comms correctly, they don't include solar power correctly, and they way overstate the ability of the internal combustion engine, particularly the old internal internal combustion engine because they want carburetors they want carburetors because they think computers are like you know the devil kind of thing right am i wrong bob you with me on this oh no i and and they're right actually anything with electronic ignition is trash right see that but that that's the problem with this is that that's what's a part of these books all right well if you're talking fiction or story type of books you know books that are narrative i guess as opposed to just reference materials, then uh, I really like the stuff that's war books. You know, pick those, pick the campaign. Korean war books can be interesting. I like Vietnam books a lot. World War II books, a lot of those are obviously written by people who experienced it, yep. and they'll definitely be gun centric and they'll be accurate for the most part. Even with casual, the the, the casualness of their accuracy is is impressive. Yeah, yeah. You know, anything about Iwo Jima too. I mean, I I've just um, Finished a couple of books on Iwo Jima. And what do they call it in Canada? Iwo Jima? Yeah, well, that's the way I call it. But. I okay. would say All Quiet on the Western Front. That's yeah. like, for me, oh, that does it. School. That's, such yeah. a, that's such a trudge, though. I mean, that book is painful. That's a long book. That's a lot of pages. That's like one of my favorite books. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh. 
Yeah, We're no. on page 200. Are you ready for the 850 page long? No, it, it, it was just such a trudge to me because a lot and of And it's depressing. Uh, well, okay. But World War One, in its core is a very depressing war. Hardcore. Oh, horribly. Like, the term meat grinder came from World War One. There was it was there was no asymmetric warfare because there was no planes to disrupt the battle line. So when they just America, just shoot each other up. They just shoot think, them up. Think about this: when America entered the war, it had a quarter of a million soldiers in their army. Now the problem was the British army could lose that many soldiers in one a day. Well, yeah, one battle anyway. Probably, yes. day, yeah. God save the Queen, Bob. It was mind boggling. Yes. So, we talk so about D Day being a slaughter. D Day, they lost 4,000, 5,000 guys. Like one attack in World War One, 100,000 okay. people dead. Okay, so we, we turn this into something that I can actually talk about intelligently. If you want a book, if you want a book, particularly for World War One, the best thing you can do is a podcast, and it's called Hardcore History. Yes. Hardcore History is the yeah. best goddamn podcast you can look at, and he makes a podcast multiple times about World War One, but not just World War One. He does another podcast on um, the Russian front of World War Two, the front we don't really know about, right? No, I do. Hugely amazing. I, and I think the uh, I think World War One um, hardcore history is on the. Um, I, I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna look it up, and I will tell you guys. I'm gonna look it up right now. But best best podcast you could ever subscribe to. Hmm. Hardcore history. No, I'm gonna check them out because I love hardcore history. Although probably I'll know most of it. Unfortunately, but you're old enough. You're old enough to know it. Yeah, well, I lived through some. My grandfather that's right. fought that's World right. War One. My grandfather was a sniper in World War One, and that's Damn. not a bit of bullshit. And, and he, he shot you with the bullets. Rifle. That's how old you are. Well, he shot the. Uh, he loved the Ross rifle. He was originally given it, and he kept it all the way through the war. He would not trade that in because <laughs> what he was doing. It was way better than the Lee Enfield. Is this a Canadian? No, Lee yeah. Enfield rock. What are you talking about? Oh. Know, it didn't sound like a Ross rifle, although it was a straight full rifle, so it was very fast. Well, that means we're about to do the uh, tactical pop quiz. And the, uh, just Jimmy didn't do nothing. We're going to do the raffle for the knives. So going to jump over to the store over here and see how many people jump in on that. Oh, yeah. You're just going to take all the names and then raffle all those knives? Oh, that's cool. Yep. So take a look here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We'll go with fifteen. One person did order twice, but I said each purchase, so maybe that was a good strategy. But I do appreciate everybody that uh, helped us out with that. And what did I just say? The number was 15. So we'll go over to random, and we'll grab the... I'm trying to figure out how to do this while I'm screen sharing. I can move it over to this screen, perhaps, and screen share the other screen in front of Instagram. Instagram's being a nuisance today because I normally point it at the one screen. So let's I move random over here. That'll do it. I'm being dead air during all this. Appreciate it. Everyone. No, it's actually um, listening to you, so it's not dead air. <coughs> no, I was going to say, uh, so going back to the podcast, Dan Carlin, Hardcore History Blueprint for Armageddon is the World War One whole thing. Well, all quiet on the Western Front. Here we go. All right, so now we're going to hit the 15, and this would be for, I think so we'll do it for this orange Gonzo knife. I think they're worth about 25 bucks. Sweet Good knife. Deal. Good knife. Did that work? Did that see the, the knife? Yeah, okay. So I saw it. I saw it. Knife. Counts. Number nine, and now I'll have to ask Clover, since he hasn't said nothing, do I go from the top or the bottom? 
Let's go from the bottom. Always the bottom. Nine. Our bottom. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's rich. That's rich. Try to remember that by writing it down somewhere, maybe. Put it over here. We could just think to ourselves, that's what we're not. Rich. Rich. So next, we'll do the same 15, right? And used to be rich. this one will be for whatever's next in the pictures here. The Mora collection. So this will be mm. the one. And we'll generate again. Uh-oh, 15. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. Interesting. This is going to be super we're stacking. Well, Okay, what are you doing? I'll go with Hosh since you don't have a... Or thing in the fight, top or bottom? Top. Seriously? Top. Guess who's getting that one? Me. Nope. Congratulations, Tosh. Oh no. Nope, no. It is Yankee Marshall. It's the last yes. Yes. No yes. way. Great. Yes. I hope he makes it's a video epic. on it. He should. And and he should. He should say thank you, Hosh Nasi, for that. No freaking way. <laughs> it's gonna be. People are gonna say it's rigged. All right, and next we'll do the the gag one, I guess you could say, or maybe it's a bunch of useful little knives. There's some use, some new ones in there, just little cheap knives, fishing tackle box type of things. And we'll go back to the random, and we'll hit it one more time. Well, this is why they they are G Web's DNA on them. So, so we go from the top or the bottom this time, Angelina. Top or bottom? Uh, top. So that means three from the bottom is Neil. Right on. So thanks everybody again for uh, bringing in a bunch of scratch to uh, help us get to SHOT Show next week and make it a lot more comfortable than it would have been without all the sales this week. And I guess I should stop screen screen sharing. Uh, we don't have a tactical pop quiz today because Jimmy, I don't know what happened to Jimmy. Anybody hear from Jimmy today? No, I think he's dead. Uh, he's been working uh, nine to five thing, so he might have just passed out. He's been working physical private job, so. We might just, Can we die. just spend like twice the time talking about a movie. Can we just pick a movie and like fight about it? Just fight about it. Definitely can. So, uh, it. so no. let's, today's an interesting movie. So we do try to come up with a gun related movie every day, something that you might not have seen in a while, or if you're one of the youngins, something you ain't seen yet. Got 17 people watching. Um, oh, you know what? I didn't write over here who won everything. So. I'm getting my scorpion stinger right. ready for this movie. 17 people? That's what happens when you go this late. Yeah. I hope it's the notebook. Thank God there's some people. Oh, it's definitely oh, the notebook. The movie. I never said the movie. It is Platoon. The movie Platoon. Oh, oh, oh. Really? Platoon? Oh, come on. It's, thought... it's like it's like everybody's everybody's like cool guy Vietnam movie, but not like the best Vietnam movie. Like, everybody wants to be like, I'm more full metal jacket. I'm more apocalypse now. Like, people pick one of those two and they don't really want to like, I'm the platoon guy. Like, nobody really does that. That's a good point. Yeah, that's true. Well, right? Am I wrong? I'm not wrong, right? Like, everybody kind of sides on one of those. Like, I'm no. the, I, I am the full metal jacket guy. I like full metal jacket way more than like uh, apocalypse now because apocalypse now is like a fantasy movie. But at the same time, Platoon, it's like, God, it's like, yeah, yeah, the deer hunter, yeah, the deer hunter is a better, okay, I don't, I don't want to do it, I'm not going to throw an audible. Like it's Odd Angry Day, an Australian movie. We saw it, it's out. Wait, no, what? I mean, the movie's the movie. You have a gun in your car. What is going on? No, 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 wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So we I've only seen Full Metal Jacket out of all those ones you've named. I don't even know what Platoon is. You have not seen Platoon, so Clover. Not. You've seen Platoon. I've seen yeah. Platoon. Oh yeah, yeah. So we we should actually we should act regardless of what we think is a better Vietnam movie. We should review the movie in its entirety. Well, not in its entirety. review it. I mean, should so, I watch it? Yes. Okay. Charlie like, Sheen. Charlie like Sheen is in Platoon, right? Charlie yeah, Sheen, you're Platoon. Gonna, you're gonna have to watch it on fast forward. And we're only going to give you a minute and a half, so it's going to have to really be. There's back. only there's only a very small slow part, and that's Willem Dafoe getting shot in the back. <laughs> so right? do you like Vietnam movies, as a rule? What? 
or you haven't seen very many? Um, I mean, I've seen Full Metal Jacket. That was okay. It's very much like Full Metal Jacket, just a little bit different. No, it's not like Full Metal Jacket. That's not. A, that's a horrible. We should not do that. We should I have. <laughs> well, I have a little bit of a crush on Vincent D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio? So. You're talking about Gomer Pyle? Yeah, just like well, really small, but only because of Law and Order. Not okay, okay, thank movie. you, thank dude, you. I'm like, dude, yeah, Gomer yeah, yeah. Pyle's like goof. Like he shoots himself in the face because he's a he's a moron. Yeah, no, it's but, like it's well, Law and Order. And like the most important detective of all time in Law and Order. Let me, let me give, let me give Angelina some incentive to watch Policini. Johnny Depp. Movie. Uh, I hate Johnny oh, Depp. Is John? I for, I even forgot Johnny. So the only people that are in uh, Platoon to me are Charlie Sheen and Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe's in it in the most iconic scene in the whole movie. Who the hell is Willem is, Dafoe? What the fuck are you talking Wait, about? Hold on. Hold on, maybe I'll recognize if I you see You just him. need to look at the picture. Have you watched Boondock Saints? Have you watched Boon Wait, wait. Have you watched Boondock Saints? No, I've never seen Boondock Saints. He's the, oh, okay. he's the dark. He's the Okay, have you watched Spider-Man? Spider-Man with uh, Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire yes. Spider-Man. Yes. Okay. The Goblin, the Green Goblin's the Green Goblin is Willem Dafoe. Hey Harry, hey. Ah, he's got the eyes. That's Willem Dafoe. Is that the dad of the guy? The dad. In the yes. lab? Yes. 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 Oh, okay, yeah. Willem okay. Willem Dafoe is a fairly iconic actor. Very, very good. Very Obviously good. not. <laughs> okay, all right. So Willem Dafoe in Platoon, because he tries to, like, stand up for the peoples, gets shot in the back by his uh, his baints. It's, it's friendly fire. They kill him. There's the spoiler. Ha <laughs> ha, spoiler. I spoiled it. I thought he got killed by the Viet Cong that were chasing him because he was running towards him and they were just well, like, that's what they try and allude to, but yeah. he got shot by his friends. I don't think so. Okay. I think you saw that. So welcome to Canada. Much, Platoon, Platoon's a much darker one, but anyway, it's one of the big um, Vietnam. Wait, 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 wait. Platoon is one of the darker ones? Are we comparing that to Full Metal Jacket or no? To all of the ones that came out in that era. We're talking one of those in the eighties Vietnam movies yeah. when you could start to make Vietnam movies. Before yeah. that, Vietnam well, movies had to Vietnam, be right? dramatic and Good had to Vietnam. What? Good morning, Vietnam. Yeah. Oh, garbage. that is not a dark garbage, movie. What the fuck? Garbage like pop movie about Vietnam, yes. Okay, but, wait a second here, wait a second. Forrest Gump, Vietnam movie or no? Yes. yes, technically a, a pop after all the it was okay to make Vietnam movies and you could now not respect it so much anymore and you it was no longer a sore for the country is one in of those, those in those highly detailed caveats that G Webster's put down. I agree I agree one hundred percent. What about the T V series, right? There was that T V series. What are you talking about? The animated Forrest Gump animated hour? What are we talking about? Oh, the TV China series Beach. China Beach. Oh, China oh, Beach. Well, no, China no, 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 no. Okay. Oh, I'm talking platoon, not. Wait, are we opening this up to television show? Or are we opening this up to television show? I don't know what happened now. Now we're just reading off obscure Vietnam. Oh, I'm gonna get crazy. I'm gonna get crazy right now. Have you guys watched Call of Duty? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Have you watched the television show Tour of Duty? Of course. No. Have you watched it, G Web? Seriously? Of course, yes. Yeah. So if we're gonna open this up to uh, television shows, I would actually bring Tour of Duty into the Vietnam War experience before I would bring in a half of these movies. Oh yeah. yeah Tour yeah. of Duty was a great show. Yeah, that yeah, that was a really... You're not gonna find Tour of Duty anywhere, I don't think. What's that? You're not gonna find that like on Netflix or Amazon or anything right now. No, no, because it's hardcore. It's like it's not China Beach. No, China or Beach. China Lake. It was trying to be Mash, I guess. So um, anyway, yeah, we're but talking way better. About, we're talking about Platoon though, and basically at the time in the whatever it was, eighty. Where are we? Eighty-two. Eighty-six. Is, that when, is it when it came yeah. out? Yeah. Oh, so back then. You couldn't. You couldn't have made, the Vietnam movies were just. I mean, Rambo and stuff happened, but um, I guess that maybe broke the door open, and you could start to have. But it was all like Apocalypse Now and Deer Hunter until Platoon and Full Metal Jacket and the rest started to come out, and then you could have Vietnam movies and nobody'd get upset about it. 
and uh, then they started to get in real fluffy. So I, that's why I call it one of the darker ones. The themes of it are darker and are more about the war and being in war as opposed to just staged, you know, some love story staged in a war, some action okay. movies. Okay. But it's all about friendly fire and, you know, pretty much like Apocalypse Now and Full Metal Jacket with, you know, what was going through the people's heads, not just what was happening. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth watching. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a different question. It's worth watching. It's worth watching at least once to figure out where you line up in that whole world. Because it, it, it's, it's a different world. Yeah, it was a different movie that. than We Were Soldiers. We Were Soldiers is more like a dramatic... Yeah, but that's so much later. Of it. Exactly. Way later. That treats it like... Um, so if you look at it, if you look at We Were Soldiers in the rear view and you compare it to like a World War II mm -hmm. movie, he makes it look like World War II. Now, that's not historically inaccurate because technically that war, that part of the war, goes back to just after Korea the beginning of the Vietnam War. And Platoon and Full Metal Jacket, all those came way later than the the, the place in which we were shoulders exist. A different the war. Vietnam War was was before World War Two. I mean the Japanese What are you talking about? No, but he's talking about we were soldiers was literally we were our soldiers. Friends. We're, we're our first sending an army to the war. Oh, not yeah, but, I mean, so, I mean, te technically, in that situation, I know that he, he quote-unquote, organizes the masses and everybody has an M16, but th there's probably situations in that video that aren't covered where people still had an M14 or a grease gun or whatever. It's that early in Vietnam. Correct. That's the point. Well, I think that is our gun movie today. So, Bob, thumbs yeah, I give it two. Over. Um. Yeah, you know Oliver Stone. It's an Oliver Stone flick. Most of his are pretty good. Um, and then you know the, the Willem Dafoe scene. I mean, that's iconic. I mean, how many times has that been copied? Yeah. Over yeah. And over. So it really is. You know, I'm gonna say two. I'm gonna say two. Yeah. Uh, gosh. I, and we're two out of. Are we at a one out of five? That's how we do this. We have two thumbs on our bodies. We just have yeah. two. No, I get, can I give it a one and a half? Can I give a yeah. half thumb? Yeah. I'll give it a one and a half. I don't think it's the best Viet Vietnam movie because I don't I don't think it really delves into anything to do with the Vietnam people. It's just we're oh, here uh, and then yeah. that's it. A little bit, but only through the eyes of the soldiers. But yeah, not at all. Right. So I I, I don't think it's a very good in in impression of what the war really was so then angelina from your excellent description over here um well i haven't seen it but i'll watch it but it sounds you know it sounds like i'll watch it i hope it's on netflix or whatever that's a good question i don't know if it is i don't I think it's on it. either so if you would have asked me in the 90s two thumbs up for sure is best movie ever now it's gonna, gonna get one but uh I could easily be talked into too. It was definitely one of the ones that got me to join the freaking army. I think it's I think it's like the least of the Vietnamese right. war movies though. Like Vietnam war movies. It's like one of the least credible for some reason uh, to me. Just think about that for a minute, Hosh, though. That's what G Web says was one of the reasons got him to join the army. Yeah, it's propaganda. I don't know. I watched that okay. movie. Okay. Uh, that, that doesn't mean they did a good job at it. I don't know. Like, well, we have to give them credit. What are we talking about here? Well, I'm just saying, like, I watch that movie and go, I don't want to join that army. And she was watching You're in movie. Canada. You're a digital Molson. Yeah, different human beings, man. So that was <clears> 1996. <throat> no, I, I mean, that's completely true, too. I mean, it, it just two totally different mindsets. Different. It was 1986, dude. A little different. The Queen. All right, so with that, we'll move into Gun Shop of the Day. So I actually have a movie or a video over here we'll watch, a movie of this Gun Shop. If I can get my screen capture to work on the other screen. It's all weird tonight. Yeah, actually, to me, it would have been early 70s. So. It is a cool shop from yeah. Rachel Lupo. It's outside of San Antonio in Pelotes, Texas. Uh, it's, yeah, I don't know. So it's called Edge took us to this one as we toured the San Antonio shops. 
told us about how this one started out as a real small shop and it's evolved over the years and grown and it's kind of cool to see the shop and it's kind of out in the west end of san antonio uh, so i imagine they get quite a few people out really hunting and that kind of thing they also had this cool little display here that i hadn't seen before where they take a cluttered safe and then to show how the organization works i don't know if i got it in the video real good there but kind of a cool ad for the front of uh the gun safe anyway cool little shop called gun shack in Lotes, Texas. Stay tuned for more on the Gun Show Loophole Tour. Thanks for watching. The guys and gals of gunwebsites.com encourage you to ship. That's definitely a cool looking shop. Yeah, Smeggy. he messed it up. He's me Smeggy messed it up. Ed Edge says oh, that uh, it started out in this building, right? If it's going to screen share, is it screen sharing again? It started out in that outbuilding, and then they made, I think he said that they made this building because it got big enough. So that's kind of cool. I like to hear about a shop that's growing and yeah, they just build another building onto it. I really like that safe thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. you know, like that um, corrugated plastic or something. So when you look at the picture from one side, I didn't do it justice on there. But uh, if you go back and forth, it goes from like real messy to cl to clean. And uh, I've just seen plenty of frustration i guess you'd say with those companies making little pictures and doing different things and that's so obvious it must cost a lot to put a big sticker like that up but all the ground let's it's be fair ground. though can, oh, can i say that can i say oh, that no. nobody is lining up their rifles that way in a safe by the way nobody's doing that please nobody's doing that oh come on i had to do that in order to get all my rifles in my safe and then I would have to pile two. Or you don't three. do the cross hatching, like where you you you've got a small side on the left, like where you put all your rifles, like cross hatched, and then your no, handguns no, no, no. go all down the middle. Those are just rifles. There's only rifles there. There's no handguns. Where are your handguns at? You got to have different safe for your handguns. What's going on? Oh, you got your handguns on the top shelf. You just can't see that. It's under the stick stuff. them on There's the no door. Uh. I know in Canada healthy, you don't have handguns. Right but I got a we shelf on mine. I put my handguns up there. I'm in Canada. I can only have like, well, I can have as many as I want, but I only. I have, have a handgun that is 16 inches long. We call it a handgun. <laughs> Shit. All right. So anyway, that's a gun shop. Uh, it's got a northwest out of San Antonio, out into the what I would call the suburbs of San Antonio. Kind of neat. Horrible driving in that city, though. I've got to say that. Oh, I, but, I, I'm you know, there is just no but road. I hate the highways. So we do try to feature a gun shop every day on the show. That's one of the reasons we do the show live uh, daily. So if you got a gun shop you'd like to recommend, feel free to email us dailygunshow at gmail dot com and uh, let us know. We we say we're always looking for new shops. So Maggie jumped in and said you'd been talking about the uh, bump stock thing. We got a gun of the day to do, and I'm going to suggest we blow off the training subject completely because it's a stupid subject we can address anytime and talk about the bump stock because it's something that's uh, important. We have only one more week, and uh, the louder we make our voice, the more people we can get involved, uh, the less chance we'll see this stuff coming up again. But I yeah. want to talk. So, Smeggy, what, what were you doing live there? Gun was relevant to today's chat, so movie and stuff. We'll do it. Just okay. let's talk about this law. Yeah. Okay. So basically, um, I I started out. I just made a video. I popped the the uh, link to the ATF comment section, and you know, just kind of explain that hey, it, if for people who have been under a rock, they don't know the ATF is looking at reclassifying bump stocks as machine guns. And I, I gave my point of view, which very simply is basically a machine gun is already black and white. One trigger, one shot, semi-auto. One trigger, multiple shots, full auto. That's very simple. They already have a good definition. Now, you can argue whether machine gun should be legal or not, you know, whatever. But that's a good definition. They're looking at making that a gray area and confusing right. the whole thing. So I think that's dumb. I think we should all write the ATF and tell them that's dumb. Don't do it. Whatever. So basically the video was, I didn't realize that this was still going on live. Otherwise I would have just jumped in here. Uh, the video was me going through 
the public comments. Because once you submit, you can click a little link that says like show comments and you can read everyone's comments. And I would say 95 to 97% of them are pro-freedom, pro-gun, you know, don't ban bump stocks. This is dumb, blah, 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 whatever. But there was one I saw earlier today. So I'm kind of spoiling my own video just to talk about this. But just watch the video because I, I read it word for word. There was one comment in there that just was like, if you want to own a gun, you should be registered, have a permit, have training, blah, blah, blah. And this really stood out to me. They said, and if the NRA was smart, in quotes, they are not, they would certify gun trainers. And as soon as I read that, I'm sitting there going, is that not the vast majority of what the NRA does? Like every trainer I know is NRA certified trainer. And so once I saw that, I was like, all right, I have to make fun of this person. So that was the basis of that. But obviously the, the main backbone is write the ATF, give them your comment. And if you want to laugh at me making fun of some person that was pretty ignorant, then watch my video. It's on my channel. So you're telling us to mock someone, Smeggy? I don't think we like to do that here. I, I, yes, I, I, I mocked someone who was anti-gun and was very ignorant about what's going on. Because there was other stuff in there. Like I said, I don't want to step on my own toes. But I thought it was funny. It, it ended up being 20 minutes, so whatever. Skip around, I guess. But the important part of that is write the ATF. Give them your public comment. They want our opinion. Let's give them our opinion. They did that with, you know, the M855. They did that with some other stuff. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, G Webs has said it before, so I'm not saying anything new. But if we become a force that that is so outspoken, dude, we're not messing with these guys anymore. Every time we try and do something, we get a million comments saying not to do it. We'll just, yeah, I mean, really, we've got to look at the um, rainbow agenda and go, we're going to be as loud as a bunch of fat lesbians. <laughs> I don't know about that. But anyways, I mean, we not do that need I, to... By the way, by the way, if, if I had my choice, I would rather be side to side with a bunch of lesbians that are pro-gun in a lot of situations. Because next to anyone who's pro gun, I think that I think that they will get more traction legally in the federal government than we are right now. I think the point of this is to go leave a comment on the ATF things. It takes like thirty yep. seconds. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I even put it. I even put a comment to my own video, and uh, I'll say it now. And basically, the thing was. If you are watching this or you're seeing this and you haven't left the comment, screw you. I don't like you. If you haven't done it, I don't want to talk to you. Just go do it. I and left I'm being mean, but I don't care. I left a comment. I'm in Canada. It doesn't do me any good, but I still Where's left the comment? comment? Where's the link? Where's the link? Okay, we got a link for you right here. And um, it's in the description as well. What happened to it? You can post it in the chat. I hope everyone who's listening right now either left a comment or is doing it right this second. Well, we all have audiences. Clover just had an inch, you know, another Thursday night chat where we talk about ways to uh, monitor and, and hone and, and communicate with our audiences. And the reason we do that is to have fun, right? But we also have some motives, right? And one, of, hopefully, one of those motives is awareness and. Um, activation or activating people you know to get out and do stuff so we've got a week to motivate people and a lot of times being imminent uh you know a deadline is what motivates people uh unlike the petitions uh the uh comments like this um are all uh, are all monitored they're all like you know, accepted and sorted according to the chat earlier today with that atf guy uh, so they'll all be recognized and that means the number of them will be noted and if they get an overwhelming number it's not it's not as easily or it's not as ignored as easily as the white house petition seemed to have been 
Right. It, well, and that's the thing I, I found interesting, too. Like I said, you can click a link and actually read the public comments. That's why they're public. So it that's it, even if the ATF is like, oh, we didn't hear much. You can prove them wrong right there because you can go through and read every single one of them. So they get held accountable. There's no way they can say, oh, 90 percent of the people said ban it because you can look through in two seconds and see that's not true. Well, I did. I did a. Uh, I did a Friday show on this. Uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago or something like that. My plan is probably tomorrow is to drop a drop a little video uh, and and sort of remind people something I did today. And you're more than welcome to go if you use Twitter to jump over there and just retweet uh, mine. Uh, it's Clover. It's at CloverTac, of course. Um, or do your own. But I actually tweeted to Donald Trump. And then I also retweeted that to all sorts of uh, media uh, news figures and politicians and other things as well. That basically said, reminded him that he said, you know, he wasn't going to, you know, push any type of uh, additional gun control stuff. Reminding him of that, and then also reminding him that the ATF is under his branch, the executive branch, and the attorney general that's asking for this uh, is his attorney general. So, um, yeah, he needs to, I forgot how I wrote the tweet, but something about he needs to get this taken care of and, and be consistent with what he told us he was going to do. So, um, I don't know that that will, that will make an impact or do anything, but... You know, I figured it, it can't hurt to try to start a little movement and maybe put a little pressure on the on the president, on the executive branch that, you know, hey, you said you weren't going to, you know, you weren't going to be for this. And then now, you know, we've got this these backdoor actions going on. You know, I I don't know if this is. Uh, uh, if this does anything. Obviously, it doesn't. I think what you did is way better. But I actually had a dream the other night where I got to meet Trump. And the first thing I said to him was, remember gun owners voted for you act like it. So I must've been channeling you or something. Cause my subconscious was saying, Hey man, we, you know, I'm, we want I'm this pretty stuff. Sure, I'm pretty sure Smaggy, your dream didn't uh, affect Donald Trump in any way, which or form. It probably didn't, but it kicked it from my subconscious out to my, regular conscious and that's why i left a comment and made a video and i've been spreading the word all week good for you that's actually amazing that you can you know get someone your age to get off their ass and do shit that's like a big part of it and um one thing i want to say about this whole topic is please do not think that somebody else will do your part for you um you have to show up like, don't think, oh, tons of people are going to show up, so I don't really need to. Please show up. Please bring your family. Um, so, like, fill out the comment and send the link to your family and your friends and say, hey, you know, this is just, um, even if you're not a gun person, this is, like, this is a freedom issue. So, this is America. You know, care about it. Right on. I'm going to suggest also that, uh, you know, we can all, it, it, those that are creating content can encourage others to do it. Uh, Mac brought up a point. Tim brought up a point earlier in his chat that you can go. You have influence on the people that you follow. We don't live in a world where the audience is just a dumb, you know, a con, uh, dumb uh, factor in the equation. We have a comment field, and we can, you know, have uh, conversations with the content creators, and uh, here on YouTube or on YouTube. Uh, and all the other social platforms, and then also like what Clover said, um, you know, and the, the some to other people are, are representatives and stuff. But I think two of the influencers out there, um, this is the kind of thing that if it gets enough, um, if it gets enough attention, if it gets enough murmur going, uh, that's what happened with the M855. No one's just there wasn't a switch that was someone decided, okay, this is relevant. We're going to flip that switch. What happened, if you remember back to that situation, was it started on social media with the people out there who knew about it immediately, and then the murmur grew to a point where the um, 
larger than social media influencers, the talk radio people with much larger audiences, I guess, started talking about it. And that went to cable TV and it immediately got to whatever you'd call prime time. So, you know, old media found it. Uh, so if we're going to keep exercising our muscles, one of those things is to intentionally cause that kind of chain of events, right? You don't intentionally, you, you, it's great to have a happy accident, especially when it rolls in our favor, but we don't want to, to depend. It's no strategy to depend on happy accidents, you know, to, to save us. So let's talk, let's think about how we as an active audience can influence the people who um, you know, let's say, for example, using the people we know about, Hickok, Eric, Tim, Yankee, you know, bugging them in their comments with enough um, persistence, it might make them address something. It, it didn't, did it not get Hickok and Such to go to uh, two-A rallies, which basically came up out of Matt's chat one afternoon, right? So, you know, you can affect the human being to do something, and this time we're only asking them to encourage their audiences to make noise about this with enough social media noise about this, you know, we can, again, in, in create that same chain of events. And if that's the case, not only is it possible that they'll never put the stupid bump stock up again, because remember, this never actually been proven this was ever used in any crime of any significance, right? Or at all. Uh, but, you know, not only will they leave the bump fires alone for a while, but we might get share back. And wouldn't it be a great exercise for us to figure out that we have influence as audience to the creators and then those creators have uh, influence over the larger and larger um, influencers. And then, you know, change happens. And now we get share off of the shelf. And now we get share pushed through. If we get share pushed through with the change in sporting to lawful use, that changes the game. That changes the playing field. And now we're, we're if we do get a swing in politically to Democrats, now they're, they've lost ground and they have to push back. I'd rather set ourselves up for that. And this is the way we start all that. None of that, you know, we could all sit back and wait for this to happen. It'd be great if all this happens theoretically, but we have influence. So I absolutely, keep, this is like a week. We have it a week, you know, talking about it a month from now, what happened with the, uh, um, two a rally. So we should do this a month ahead of time. We should talk about this a year ahead of time. Well, it's a year ahead of time. Is anybody talking about the two a rallies next year? No, nobody's talking about it at all until it's immediate till it's a deadline next week. Well, it's a deadline next week. Why aren't you talking about it, Hickok? Why aren't you talking about it, Eric? Why aren't you talking about it more, Tim? Why aren't you talking about it, uh, Yankee? Right? Why aren't, you, why aren't I talking about it? So Clover made an idea to do a video. I think that's great. What I did is I just opened up my screen capture software, and I made a few, and I scheduled them. So they're going to happen while I'm at SHOT Show. They're going to come up and remind you to, uh, to do that, so to put your uh, comment in, or if you added something new to your um, information, post a second comment. You. Yeah, I mean, people really need to, I mean, people just need to, like, get out and do it because that's, that's how your rights get lost. And, like, I mean, a lot of people say, you know, oh, who cares? It's a stupid bump stock. I don't give a shit. I don't use one. It's not the point. It's the point is, is that they're taking something. And once you take, you know, for, for, you know, for me, since I live in California, I already have a lot of things taken from me. I know what it's like, but other states, you know, you're going to feel that if you don't, you know, take 30 seconds to make a comment, take another 20 seconds to make a post on Facebook or, you know, out to your audience or get your parents to do it or whatever. Just, you know, spread it around and get it done. Good point. And it's how they're doing it this time. This creates precedence for an agency of uh, the executive branch, which has no business in doing anything more than interpreting and, and enforcing laws that are given to it by the house uh, now they're over there creating uh, you know interpretations that are going to be enforced as if they were laws so that's a horrible precedent to set and i guess to you know company that talking to your representatives and saying shame on you why am i having to talk to the atf why is this an issue for me as a firearms owner when this is your forte you should never have let the responsibility or the uh, obligation of law of creating law go over to the executive branch you're violating the constitution at the core level right there well yeah well today you know today it's guns tomorrow what is it even if guns aren't your thing you have to either everyone's free or no one is free so if you take stuff from gun owners you know three years down the line you're sitting in china now well so. yeah 
Yeah, I mean, one thing already, happens at an airport, and now there's an agency that's tasked with regulating something is now creating new interpretation, and now it's law, and now you have to travel differently because of this precedent. Well, yeah. I mean, just, just look, they're already attacking freedom of speech, right? You can't say certain words because they might trigger someone because they'll hurt someone's feelings. Like, it's ridiculous. Okay, right? let's and that's, we're talking about the actual ATF survey though not just in theory how far sec our first amendment's being taken in this case our first amendment is right there yeah just you have to take advantage of it and that's i mean that's really the part that i mean like i i heard you say one time you know even the potheads like can ra rally together and get something done i mean that's really shameful i'm not not i'm not against potheads but i'm just saying um you know there's a lot of gun owners and there's no, there's absolutely no reason why we don't have a loud voice. Exactly. All right. So with that, um, watch Maggie's video. I guess that's 20 minutes of actual feedback on the comments that are happening. And remember, the other side is going to use that comment field, too. I'm sure they're getting encouraged by Gabby Giffords and the like and the Pelosi's and the Bloomberg people. Uh, if he's paying people to go in buses, that's actual human beings he's had to pay real money to. How much does he have to effort to get them to write something in a blog thing like this? So, um, you know, watch some you know, if, I, if, I, if I may for a second, um, my, uh, my sister-in-law was asked to do a fish, uh, petition signing, and they were paid a dollar a signature. To go out and gather them, like hold a clipboard and you get a buck every time there's a and signature. And it's not against guns. It's not against guns, but just in general. So you can imagine right. if it's against anything else, he yeah. can put how money many, forward how to How many make dollars it. does Bloomberg have? That means how many signatures. That's right. That's right. That's the point. Yep. And that's what he's done successfully with ballot initiatives. You pay a marketing firm or you pay all the marketing firms in an area. Right. Yep. So that they're all working together and you tell yep. them to go get a buck a signature. You pay them five bucks a signature. They're paying some other guy a buck a signature. And, you know, that trickle down money's going to those organizations and they're not even available in some cases for us to hire the other marketing firm in town or something. But, yeah, they get the, the things on a ballot initiative that way. Yep. So, again, you don't need they're kind of bypassing the whole laws come out of the house by need. You know, they're done by strategy all right well i was going to say another resource is watching max video uh, military arms channel did a video with that guy who is a uh a former atf agent he's been in that building where i visited on the daily show a couple of hundred i guess on episode number 400 we were at the atf technology branch and that guy worked there so he's got yes, some excellent indeed. Huh? yes indeed yeah yep. so uh, oral p on the fence tried to if i remember right i really wanted them to but they kept looking at me and i didn't want to get arrested for doing something weird so repeat across the street i think anyway um repeat in the close vicinity to all the atf forms or all the 4473s um let's not forget if red dawn would have hit the atf technology branch they'd know where all your guns are not just calumet colorado so um that's true. really Let's talk about Max video, and then we've got a link to the uh, register, federal register, whatever it's called, where you can actually fill out the thing. The Gun Owners of America has a pretty decent, um, I guess, boilerplate, for lack of a better word, like a bunch of uh, stuff you can copy and paste, uh, which might you know, give you either something to just copy and paste, literally, or uh, something to start from, some, some bullet points to uh, make your position to the ATF. I think we probably wore everybody out. Appreciate everybody who's been watching. Bob has a gun of the day, though. And is there anything do. to do with today? I do. A random gun of the day. And it's perfect for the uh, uh, the movies we've been talking about. So it's the uh, the Stoner 63. Um, now we can say the Stoner 63 or the 63A. We're kind of talking about both of them. The 63A was the one that was mostly used in Vietnam. Um, by the seals so yeah it's just it's you know everybody knows stoner or you should if you know anything about guns but stoner 
invented the uh, AR-15, which, of course, became the AR-16. Um, became the what now? We call it the M-16 in our country. Okay. Anyway, the... Uh, the uh, stoner, the, the M63, um, this was just the pinnacle of rifle development, as far as I'm concerned. I just want one so bad. It would be the come one. On now. If, come on, come on, come on. I could have come any on. gun, come it on. would be the one, only one, that would be the one I'd want. What, what caliber is that? Really? All right, it's, it's a gopher gun. Oh, it is. No, it's two, two, three. But okay. man, it shoots a bunch of them. It looks like a souped-up AR-180. Yeah, kind of. But oh, it's just like it's hundred-round box. It, you can get a drum for it. You can get it set up as a as a, a tripod mount, it did everything, and it was a, a, just a regular rifle with you know thirty round box magazines. And if you wanted to have a lower profile when you're defending a position, you could have it so the box magazine fed from the top. It did, the rifle did everything perfectly. Pretty much. Well, I wonder, like, it It seems like maybe it didn't catch on all that much. Like, they kind of used it. Do they still use it now? No. So what's the deal with that? I don't know. Wait, are we, are we really saying that up front? Like, it. when it came out, everybody was on board? Bob is. I was. Um, the SEALs were. The Navy was. But... Uh, there was, I think, some politics going on. They had only just adopted the Colt AR, you know, M16. Um, so they didn't want to adopt the Stoner, even though it cost less. It was better. It did everything, you know. Yeah, just wrong gun at the wrong time. I still think it's you, the coolest firearm ever, and that would be, you know, you get your wish list, you get one full auto gun, and that's the only gun you get that's full auto. That's the one well, I... Well, there's a question. There, There's a real good question. Who, who wants to answer that question? You get one gun? One gun that's fully automatic. You're, I mean, you've got all the semi-automatics you want. What gun would you want that's fully automatic? Thompson. PKM. Yeah, I'd go with the a Russian AK forty seven. No, it's got to be full Russian though. Fully automatic? I'd go with an M fourteen. Come on, really? Crazy. Make it Jimmy back. Your choice. You you have the choice. It's your choice. <laughs> okay, you say come on, hashtag bridge, Jimmy. What Clover say? Did he say? I'm sleeping. No, huh? What do I got? What's what's what I got a choice on? Uh, Your uh, 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 gun, uh, Bob's buying. I can have any gun if Bob's buying. No, no, oh. any any full auto. You can only have one full auto though. What would you have? Bob, ooh, ooh. <clears throat> well, that's easy. If you know me, you know the answer. <clears throat> what? Ma Maxim. Oh, Maxim. Interesting. Oh, that's yeah. interesting, yeah. Gun invented by a teleporter. Yeah. There you go. But if we're going to play that game, I go back. I'm going with the Ma Deuce. Ma Deuce, fully automatic. We're good. I got that. They're fine. No, no, no. no, no. I still think the Stoner 63 is the best. Even though it is a gopher round, it's it's like, I like the AR-180, right? Like, you know, 100 and what it was a hundred round drum magazine like a swarm of bees coming at you i like that I wish, 
I mean, you know, if you were going to have one, you can only have one. Why not have the first? The first recoil operated anyway. Oh, the Maxim, though, is so crude. It's a good yeah. gun. Yeah. yeah. But you wait, only wait, get wait, one. Wait, wait, it's a good wait, gun, wait, but wait, it's wait, crude. Wait. Wasn't the potato digger before the Maxim? Uh, recoil recoil operated? operated? First recoil wait, operated. Potato digger is recoil operated for no, sure. No, it's gas. It's gas. That's why it's got that little thingy on it. Oh, okay. Okay. I see what you're doing there. You're, you guys are making all kinds of like hipster distinctions here. Mm-hmm. Sure. Hipster. No, that was an unsuccessful. Break out your hipster, LaCroix. Hipster distinctions. Right. Unsuccessful right. mechanism. That's like saying, you know, the big deal about steam let the, power. Let, and steam power. Yeah, let, the hipster tell, let the hipster tell you. Let the hipster tell you when you're making really hipster more, distinctions. Yeah. Yeah. You, would, too, do, like, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't get this yeah. reference. It's too obscure. Yeah, the Lewis gun. Now that rocked. Okay, so now, 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 okay, now you're back. This now, is now out of hand now. No, it's just what happened. Wheelhouse. Now you're back in my now you're back in my game. Okay, let's talk. Lewis, Lewis gun. Okay. Isn't it wonderful? Wait I mean a... it actually used uh the bullet blast to pump air around its aluminum barrel shroud. Okay, so what do you think about the Bren then? Are we are we close to Bren talk? Can oh, we talk about I the Bren? Bren guns, right? They're the best. I came so close to buying one. All right. So could could you could you imagine carrying around a forty five pound gun? No. It's not heavy. All right. So PKM was the correct answer. So we'll move on. And (laughs) (laughs) was that a catch the pop quiz? Because I see that Pants is saying PKM. Where was the quiz? Where was the quiz in this? Where was the quiz? Did anybody get a badge? Nobody got a badge. We had the quiz. We gave away knives. Yeah, we did the the night giveaway instead of Oh, okay, okay, okay. We got knives. Everybody got knives. Did I win knives? No, you Me missed. No. It. Maybe. Maybe. We you're all too, because you we were, too were busy here. Playing that, yeah. That PUBG. I don't know. Anyways, I bought PUBG's. stuff from GearWebsites.com. I I was at least Maggie, entered. Maggie, everybody was club, here. Bud? Everybody was here got a complimentary Glock knife. You didn't. Oh, you whatever. Didn't this. I'm I sorry. I was my, busy I supporting my, the Second Amendment. I framed my gun website products. So late. You frame Bob it. You frame it, though, bro. You frame it. Bob stuck his up on his camper with with masking tape or duct tape, I think. Yeah, he's he's got it like NASCAR duct tape to his wall. I put it in a frame with glass, bro. Come on, get on my mm-hmm. level. Hey, I mine's in my room. room. I tacked mine to the wall. Yeah, yeah good, good. Our show, good. the episode four ninety. It's Friday, so we'll be talking gun tech and DIY gunsmithing tools. So gunsmithing tools on the cheap or that you might already have around. Uh, we'll be talking about the gun biz and finishing up the SHOT Show sagas. We've been going to SHOT Show for 13 years. This will be our 13th year. So we're going to be talking about what we call the Yankee years, 2015 to 2017. Oh, Yankee years. Oh, I, was, I was there for those. Whoa. You could call it the Bob years also, except for this year. But then uh, we'll also be talking about Saturday Night Specials, which is a topic that got bumped from last week. Uh, at some point, we'll be talking about the gun training DVDs that we bumped this today. And uh, I want to thank everybody for jumping in, uh, Clover, uh, Hosh, uh, Angelina, and, uh, and of course, Smeggy for jumping in. It's got to be super late wherever you are. Yeah, it's like after three. He doesn't work, though, so it's fine. Um, no, I work tomorrow. We do have a bunch of stuff going on tomorrow. I'm not sure what's going on with the early show. Like, say, Jimmy's kind of burning the candle at both ends right now. Um, so... Uh, I'm sure somebody will pick up if he's not doing the early show. They'll do like a Good Morning Gun Channels. Uh, we mentioned Pants, our member of the day today, often runs a lobby throughout the day. Uh, knives also pick them up and do lobbies throughout the day. Uh, Pink is in a car with Marco, probably looking at the Grand Canyon tomorrow. And uh, we'll be meeting up with them in Vegas. Uh, 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 uh. They're and, probably at a Peruvian restaurant eating chicken right now. That's Marco. Actually, right I'm there. I'm just laughing because poor Pink has to listen to Marco's music. They've driven together. He's talking about shoes. Oh, He's talking about shoes right now. But I'm yeah. guaranteeing you that they're eating at some place with expensive meats. That's for sure. No, it's Peruvian. He's just got a he's got a half a chicken with a with with some sauce, and he's good. They're going to go to that one place where the meat is like months old. It's like old rancid meat, and they pay extra for that. 
They're going to go to that no, place. They, but it's a lot of it. But it's a lot of it, though. No, not that place. And then they're going to go to that place where you uh, walk around with some kind of card on your table, and they keep throwing meat at you until you turn your card over. And oh, yeah, you got to throw meat at it. it. you got to throw meat at it. So anyway, uh, they'll be up there, and um, let's see. We've got all kinds of stuff happening. There's a big gun show this weekend. We'll be buying stuff for the gun show loophole tour, people that are supporting us being on the road. Uh, we're on the Patreon. Uh, we spend money. We collect a bunch of money, 50 bucks from everybody. Uh, we spend 25 of that 50 at gun shops and gun shows. So we'll be heading up to Vegas. There's all kinds of gun shops up there. Uh, we'll have some time, hopefully, to drive around and check some of those out. Uh, we've seen most of the gun shops up there, so it's now it's more of an effort on um, monitoring them and seeing which ones are still there and saying hi and uh, checking out you know if they've grown or shrunk. Uh, then we'll be checking out some of those full auto ranges, or rental ranges and stuff. Uh, Clover and Ghost, I don't think I've ever been to Vegas to check that stuff out. Um, anyway, so there's going to be all kinds of stuff happening up there over the weekend. Uh, we're going to some extra shoot on Sunday. There was the media day shoot that everybody will be going to on, what did I say, Sunday? So there's an extra shoot on Sunday. We'll all go to a shoot on Monday. Then we'll have four days of SHOT Show. So I'm sure most people know about all this, but in case somebody's listening to this for the first time, um, you'll want to check out uh, Clover Tech over on the YouTube and on gun channels and on the other social media platforms. I'm sure he'll be using the various platforms to get his information out there. Uh, Ghost Tactical will also be up there for the first year. Uh, Pink Panther uh, will be posting stuff on gun channels. We have He built a channel over on gun channels to uh, let people request stuff for him to check out with his cameras. Uh, Smeggy will be there. I'm not sure what all you're going to be doing, but you're going under the guise of the, or under the banner of the Daily Gun Show. So he'll be representing the show there. Thanks for doing that. Um, We'll have potentially Jimmy up there, myself, and Thumbs, the people that we, Thumbs and I have been going for 13 years. Uh, we'll be running around trying to get as many people on board with this Thursday, um, 25th, you know, getting people to um, post stuff during their coverage of SHOT Show, maybe end each video, you know, uh, start each video with a plea to get the word out about that. And, uh, of course, we'll try playing with the different social media platforms up there. We've gone live before. Uh, we've got five people, so we might have some fun with uh, who knows what uh, going up there. Now, Angelina, you'll be up there too, right? I must have stepped away. Am I still here? Yeah, you're okay. still here. Okay. Yeah. So I think she'll be there too, so potentially we can all meet up, say hey. Um, yeah, it'll be a neat experience. So uh, stay tuned for this show. We'll probably be able to go live all week. I can't imagine why not. Uh, see if we can't get Bob to figure out how to launch the show, maybe. Um, so if all the rest of us are out running around, having adventures, we can all just log in with our phones. That's a good point. We'll probably try to stick with the schedule, but again, after 13 years, I know that uh, whatever you plan doesn't necessarily happen. So we'll put some structure out there, and then we'll wing it, and hopefully everyone will have some fun. Nothing I love cool. more than living vicariously through you guys on SHOT Show. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. When I can get out there, it's great. But honestly, just with you guys getting out there, you show me the things I want to see, and I show up to see what you're going to see. Right on. should be an amazing experience this time. I can't even imagine with at least five or I don't know how many cameras. Joe usually brings a couple. Jimmy, right? Look, man, it'll be a lot of cameras there. So, yeah, we'll figure out some way to make it different this year, play around with the tech. Uh, be interesting to meet up with Clover. I don't think we've ever actually met, have we? Do me do me a favor. Do me a, well, we'll absolutely go see Clover, but do me a favor. If you find a gun that's like completely crazy, it's a new on the market thing, like dive well, deep on that. Like get get some interviews, do some stuff. Did, did you just ask me that question? Yes, he did. He's lost his mind. Everybody. No, I'm saying everybody. Like, if you No, I'm talking about G. G said something about he, he hasn't met me, has he, or something. Have we? Well, I mean, I'm... we were freaking in Tulsa for three days, dude. Oh, that's right. Hey, it's late. I'm thinking. I, I know I drove right past there from Houston. Like oh, Houston. man. Hey, dude, my mind. dude, get used to it. Now you know G. <laughs> you gotta make him think. Uh, it's hey, one hey, eight here. I've been in chat since seven eight seven p.m. So 
Clover, yeah. you got to bake him cookies, man. That's a trick. You got to bake him cookies. You got to get my, you know, you got to get a wife to bake him cookies. He gives that you get that cookies in him, and then he remembers you forever. That's uh, cookies that's for true, life. Bosh. I I will never forget your guys' hospitality. <laughs> that's Set it. Set me dude, up that's on it. the couch. You had a little pile of towels and soap and shampoo and stuff sitting there waiting for me. It was great. Bag of cookies. But anyways, I think we can extended. wrap this show up. What do you guys they, think? They just didn't want you using their towels or soap. No, that's okay. that's extended. That's extended to all the gun channels families. Like you, you're all welcome. You're all friends. You're all friends. You just gotta you gotta send me a message. We'll vet you a little bit. A little bit. But then you can come in. Biker Bob, Biker, Biker Bob, we gotta de louse you before you can come in the house. You can sleep in the garage, maybe. Well, maybe the dog. <laughs> Well, you can sleep with the dog. I mean, that's all right. I know that's what you're used to. I don't want to like. I don't want to make. I have a problem with that. I like my dog. He don't smell that bad most of the time. All right, let's wrap this show up. What do you say? Did we talk about what's on tomorrow? All right, let's talk about what's on tomorrow. Smeggy. Oh, I think we kind of did. I mean, we mentioned early watch. There'll be a lobby. Uh, Edge is on tomorrow. Clover, do you do one on Fridays? I think you do. Yeah, Just My Outdoors is on before me. Yeah, budget guns? No, he's off for a bit. Uh, budget is off until like February. Jimmy has a place on this show. I mean, you see, see, we're missing Jimmy. Oh, he's but, not kidding. What, whatever's Slip going on, Jimmy. if you check out. If you check out my channels, <laughs> you'll, you'll see people talking in the lobby about stuff going live. Hopefully, the show host will post a link to their show on the main page. I know we've been trying to get people to start doing that again. For a while, everyone was doing it, and then they all stopped. Yeah, I think it's also the technical glitches on the front page. But yeah, uh, we've noticed a couple where Clover was posting them, and then they just weren't visible for everybody. Yeah, hmm. That's weird. But anyways, check us out. Everyone's doing stuff. All sorts of fun and exciting shows going on. And I think that's it. Like, share, subscribe. All right. Well, let's wrap this sucker up with our quote. Um, as everybody knows, we like to end the show with a quote. Why? I say this every time, don't I? Oh, well. Yeah, you shouldn't, you shouldn't like, come on. Just do it. Do the quote. Rock it out. All right. So this quote today is by, excuse me, uh, I'm Canadian beer, Robert E. Lee. I actually should take this quote to heart. I like whiskey. I always did. That's why I never drank it. Robert E. Lee on that. Thanks, everybody. Share, subscribe, uh, support us on Patreon. We'll see y'all tomorrow. The guys and gals of gunwebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching gunwebsites.com. Hi, thanks for your websites. Make a pancake, make a pancake, make a pancake, make a pancake, put it in a pancake. Make a pancake, that's what it's gonna make, make a pancake. Make a pancake, make a pancake.